How you doing? I'm counting my test questions for you. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> this should be working better now. I can okay. join with video. Huh? Okay. I've got 30 questions for you because this is a heavy one. Okay. If you don't understand what you need for. When they're talking about hair, you need chemistry in order to know what you're going to be doing to the hair as far as breaking it down, building it up, that type of stuff. Okay. Uh, electricity, we're using electricity sometimes with chemicals from your chem chemistry chapter. So they all work together, believe it or not. Hi, Miss Janie. And I'll start taking roll here. Hi, how you doing? We're gonna do good. Yeah, who's the Zoom user? Is that someone else joining in on us? Who me? I can't give credit if I don't know who it belongs to. Who this? Do you? I'm on here. I know it just says Zoom user. <laughs> he, oh, for me, for Heather. No, you're under Heather. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. There's someone else in here that's under you. Um, user, Zoom user. Okay. okay I'm muting. Okay. I'll start taking roll here in just a second. Huh? <laughs> okay. I'm gonna make sure everyone gets credit for it. I'm waiting for them all to come back. Okay, I'm gonna just start taking roll. Okay, make sure everybody made it back to the class. There we go. They gotcha. <laughs> okay, Athena, did you make it back? Wave your hand. Okay, she's not back yet. Okay. Benicia, I can see you. Okay. Jocelyn, did you make it back? There you are. Okay. Anthony, I can see you. Victoria. I'm here. Oh, there you are, right up there. Okay. Tatiana, are you back? There you here. are. Here. Okay. Gotcha. Samantha, are you back? Yep. There you are. Okay. Adriana. There you are. Now you use your camera. You're not back yet. Okay. Madison. Yeah, she's not back yet. Okay. Alicia J. Are you back yet? I'm back, but I have to log out. Oh, that's right. Because you have to leave it. Okay. I got you, girl. Have a blessed day. Okay. <laughs> Anthony or Athena, I got you. Okay. Um, I put her in. Jasmine H, are you back yet? Okay. All right. Abby, are you back? Yep. Okay. Lexi, are you back? No, not yet. Okay. Madison, are you back? Yeah, I'm back. Oh, there you are. Okay. Just turn your camera on. Okay. Okay. Susanna. I'm here. Okay, there you are, Bill. Thank you. Okay, Madison's back. All right. And who else have I got in here? Jasmine H, did you come back yet? 
Let's see here yet. Anna. Anna Martinez, I got you. Okay. Um, Adriana, and yeah, I got you too. Okay, let's see who's missing out of here. Okay. Tatiana Vargas. Okay. What's going on here? I got 14. One, two, three. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I should have 17 in here, count myself. So that's 16. I'm missing two people. Okay. Lexi, are you back yet? Okay. And Samantha, um, Jasmine H, are you back? Okay. Okay. Everyone else is back. Okay. And Lexi. Okay. So are you ready for some more questions? I guess. Okay, please. <laughs> okay. Who did I give it to? Benisha. Okay. Jocelyn, you ready? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Which of the following components are contained within temporary colors? Okay. Your choices are peroxide, developers, certified colors, or oxidative colors? Certified colors. I can't hear you if you're answering. Okay. Um, uh oh, <laughs> Victoria, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, you want to try a question? Yeah. Okay. Substances of acidic or alkaline nature that dissolve in water and or contain, and these are your choices, salt, water, carbon, or hydrogen. So I'm going to read the question because I want you to listen very carefully because it's kind of in the, in the question. It says substances okay. of acidic or alkaline nature, okay, dissolve in water and or contain. Your choices are salt, water, carbon, or hydrogen. Um, if you I don't know, you can just salt? say you don't know. Okay, actually it's water, okay? The water. reason why it is water, okay, we are taking substances either acidic or alkaline or neutral, right, when we're mm -hmm. che checking the pH scale. They have to have those three things in there. So the question says these dissolve in water because they have to be water-based, right, for us to, to check them. Yeah. All right. So it says dissolve in water and or contain water. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's got to have water in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Good. At least you guys understand that one, okay? I was like, that one's an easy one. Okay, um, let's see. Tat um, Tatiana, you ready? I can see you. Tatiana, can you hear me? Where'd she go? Tatiana, am I waking you up? <laughs> Tatiana? I can see her head. All right, I'll come back to you. Sam, are you ready for one? Okay. A substance that is able to dissolve another substance is known as a solvent, a powder, an emulsion, or an ointment. An emulsion? It's going to be um, a solvent, okay? In order for something to be dissolved, right, we got to dissolve it with water, right? So the universal solvent that we use is water. So I'm going to read the question again. It says a substance that's able to dissolve another substance, okay, is called, and it's solvent, okay, because that's our universal solvent. What we mainly use to <laughs> dilute something is water, right? Okay. Um, um, Adriana, you want to try one? Okay, 
Your question is going to be, huh? Can you hear me, hon? Yes. All right. Um, in the process of making a cup of instant hot chocolate or Kool-Aid, remember I was talking about that yesterday, what would the powder chocolate represent? Is it a solute, a solvent, a diluted solution, or a concentrated solution? Um, a solvent? Actually, it's gonna be the solute because remember the solvent is the liquid part of it, okay? So if I take the universal solvent, which is gonna be your water, right? And then the hot cocoa or the powder, yesterday I used um, Kool-Aid for an example, right? That's the powder part. And when you mix a solvent and a solute together, now you have a solution, okay? Where you can't, it's evenly dispersed, right? And it can't be separated at that point. Does that make it easier for you guys? Just remember all these S's, solute, solvent, and <laughs> solution. <laughs> all right. Okay, um, who's next on here? Madison, you wanna try one? She's like, yes, okay. <laughs> I'll give you an easy one, okay? In what pH range is skin and hair? Where, where'd she go? <laughs> she left me. Okay, who's the next one down the line? Okay, Abby, are you back there? There you are, okay. In what pH range is skin and hair? Is it 4.5 to 5.5, 6.5 to 7, 7.5 to 10.5, or 11.5 to 12.5? Is it 4.5 to 5.5? 4.5 to 5.5, and it's acid balanced, right? Good, okay. Susanna, are you back here? Yes. I'm losing all these people in the afternoon. Okay. You ready for a question? Yeah. Okay. Um, mixtures of organic substances and a medicinal agent are known as solutions, ointments, emulsions, or suspensions. Ointments? Yes. Good. Good. Okay. Anna. You ready to answer this one? <laughs> She's like, okay. <laughs> All right. No? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, which of the following shampoos is formulated to have the same pH as hair and skin? It's soapless shampoo, clarifying shampoo, all-purpose shampoo, or acid balance shampoo? One of so they're asking for the same pH. Mm -hmm. The first one that you said? The soapless? No. Okay, it's going to be the acid balance shampoo. Because remember, your hair, skin, and nails are going to be at 4.5 to 5.5. So we need to be using shampoos that are in the same pH range as that. So it doesn't disrupt the scalp, you know, make it dry or too greasy or whatever. So it's going to be an acid balance shampoo. That's what we want our clients using because it leaves their hair feeling clean, but not any of the other just things they don't like. <laughs> okay, um, Alicia J, if you come back, where are you? She left, remember? Oh, that's right, I forgot. She didn't get her kids. Okay, Le Lexi never came back either. Okay, um, Madison, you wanna try another one? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I lost you last time. Okay, it's okay. Because it looks like you just ju it jumped or something. Yeah. All right, um, what would be used to determine if a bottle of hydrogen peroxide is still potent? If the purchase date was no longer on the label, how would I check it? Is it a pH scale, a lightener, a patch test, or a hydrometer? Can you say the options one more time? Uh huh. A pH scale, a lightener, a patch test, or a hydrometer. 
It wouldn't be a lightener, would it? No. No, uh, that's actually our colors. It's going to be yeah. a hydrometer. Remember? A hydrometer, yeah. Yeah, we're checking to make sure. Because hydro is water, right? Yeah. We're checking solutions that break down in water. Okay. There you go. All right. Um, who have I not called on yet? Everybody had a turn that's been in here. I missed one. Susanna, did you get one already too? <laughs> She's like, do you want to try one? <laughs> okay. I'll do another. All right. One. Um, do you want another one? Okay, good. Distilled water has a pH of seven and is considered to be a salt, a neutral, an acid, or an alkali. Neutral. Good. Yes. Okay, back to uh, Athena. Let me see that face of yours. Come on, pretty face. <laughs> oh, no. Yes, I got to see your face. <laughs> All right, here's your question. What is formed when two or more non-mixable substances are united with the help of a binder? Is it a solution, a powder, an ointment or an emulsion? Solution. This one's gonna be an emulsion. Okay, remember our solutions are evenly dispersed, right? Okay, and we already know what a powder is, right? And we know our ointment's a medicinal agent, correct? Okay, so an emulsion is when we emulsify and we get bubbles. Mm -hmm. So think of it like that part of it, okay? And because it said, it has two substances that are held together with a binder. Think of like, I know it sounds a little odd, but oil and vinegar, you, when you put it together, it doesn't stay together, right? It separates, right? So some things need to have an, an ingredient in there to hold them together, all right? And it so happens in our shampoos, they have oil, which is that lipophil lipophilic, and they have water, which is an hydrophilic. So those two don't really mix unless they have some type of a binder, like a gum product mm -hmm. to keep them together. So we have shampoos, okay? So think of emulsifying like you're rubbing your hands together and making bubbles, all right? That doesn't help you. Okay. So think, so think of um, shampoo when you think of emulsions? Yes, think of shampoos. Because remember, it has to have a water base and an and a oil, right? And what would happen if you poured water, I mean oil into water? It sits on top. Noodles or something, and you have to put a little oil in there, right? And, you, and it, it will mix into something else. It makes a new chemical, pretty much. Does that make sense? Okay, because you have your oil part of the shampoo and you have your water stamp part of the shampoo. Okay. Um, Venetia, do you want to take another one? Am I stuck? <laughs> Am I stuck? No, no, no. I, can, I can hear you. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Which of the following shampoos is formulated to have? Oh, I went through this one already. Hold on. <laughs> um, oxidants, and we did through this. Oxygens such as hydrogen peroxide have the ability to release. Ability. Okay, hold Oxygen? on. Oxygen. Everybody got their. Oh, you're right, it's oxygen. But I don't know if anybody else heard that. Did the rest of you hear that? Okay, it said oxidants such as hydrogen peroxide have the ability to release, and it's oxygen, right? Because that's what we were using. You just fill that in in your study guide. Okay, okay. Um, Jocelyn, back to you. Okay, the instructions on a product state to shake well before use, which indicates that product is probably a solution, an ointment, a suspension, or an emulsion. This can review. You have to shake it up before use. Can you repeat the answers again? Options? You want the question or the option? The options. Okay. You have solution, ointment, emulsion, or suspension. Solution. 
suspension? Yes, it's a suspension because it's separating, so it's suspending. Okay. All right. Um, Anthony, you ready for one? You're sitting there going, I want one now. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. These are going to be like an accept question, okay? So you guys all have to listen to this carefully, all right? All of the following statements regarding pH are true except one of these, okay? So here's your choices. A pH measurement scale ranges from 0 to 14. Okay? A solution as, that is acidic has more negative hydroxide ions. A solution with equal hydrogen and hydroxide ions is neutral. Or pH is a unit of measurement that indicates whether a substance is acidic, neutral, or alkaline. It's the second one. The second one, yeah, because it said it's a solution is acidic if it has more negative. A solution is alkaline if it's more negative. Acidic would be positive. Okay, um, Anna M. Okay, this one's for you, hun. Which of the following cosmetic classifications require sifting until free of coarse, gritty particles? You have suspension, an emulsion, a powder, or an ointment? An ointment? This one's going to be a powder. Remember, we have to sift things through it. So it's asking you to get it so it doesn't be, it's not gritty, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Victoria, see, she's gone. All right. Um, Tatiana, where are you at? There you are. Where? I don't see her either. Tatiana, are you in there? Okay, she left. Okay. All right, who's next? Sam, this is the next one. Okay, this one's for you. Um, this one's kind of a tricky one. Okay, but listen to it very carefully. Okay. What is the pH of a client's natural hair that's been permed, colored, sculpted, and designed properly within the past few months? Is it 1.0 to 2.2, 2.5 to 3.5, 4.5 to 5.5, or 7.0 to 8.2? Is it 4.5 to 5.5? Yes. Okay, that was a trick. Everyone gets this and they're like, what are you like talking about? Question. It, said, it basically said that the client. Yeah, it is kind of tricky, huh? Because it says if the client's hair has been permed and colored, well, if we're doing it professionally, it better be back in that 4.5 to 5.5 as we are professionals, okay? So the rest of that stuff didn't mean anything except the part that said done professionally. <laughs> All right, so look out for that question. All right, um, Adriana, you ready? Yes. I can see her face. Okay, this one's going to be for you. A pH of five is how many more times acidic than a pH of six? Is it going to be 1.5, 10, 100, or 1,000? Ten? Yep, ten's right. Okay, does everyone understand what that means? Okay. All right, good, because between each number, like one to two or two to three or three to four, okay, it's always gonna be 10, right? It's just when you jump from the middle point where it's seven and you go seven to five, it's gonna be a hundred, right? Seven to four would be a thousand because you're going down. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay, but in between each number, it's just 10. Okay. Um, uh, Madison, you wanna try another one? So sure, why not? <laughs> okay. Hair is made up primarily of, you have protein, sebum, telogen, or macros. Isn't it protein? Yes, it is. Thank you. 
Okay. Susanna, are you in here? Did you yep. in? I have to. Okay, there you are. This one is yours, okay? Basic substances that cannot be broken down into simpler substances are known as solids, elements, molecules, or compounds. Is it molecules? This one's elements, I'm sorry. Okay, so when they can't be broken down any, in anything further, it's gonna be an element, okay? All right, um, what else have I got in here? Uh, she left too, okay. Um, they got everyone in here. Okay, Athena, are you there with me again? Athena? Yeah. There you are. Okay, this is your question, okay? Which term identifies change associated to an oxidative hair color procedure? Is it a carbon change, an oxygen change, a physical change, or chemical change? A chemical change? That's right. Good girl. Okay. All right. Um, Sam, now I'm just going to start picking on people because you already know what role <laughs> you're after next time. Okay. Sam, this is going to be for you. Okay. Um, uh, here it is. Which of the following classifications would identify emulsions that are generally used by salon professionals? I remember telling you this one yesterday. Is it deodorant, loose, or water and oil emulsions? Emulsions. Sorry, do you mind repeating? It, it just kind of was breaking it. Okay, which of the following classifications would identify emulsions that are generally used by the salon professional? Did you get it? Okay, you have deodorant, loose particles, oil and water emulsions, or water and oil emulsions. Water and oil emulsions? It, it, it's going to be oil and water. I'm just going to give you a throw this out there because yesterday I kept saying everything we use, remember, is oil and water. And the reason why I'm going to tell you that is the first thing that we use is a shampoo, correct? Okay. And what does shampoo have in it? It has oil and water in it, right? So the oil needs to attach to the oil in the hair, right? And the water does the rinsing off. So most of our products actually start off with oil first and then water. Okay. And so that means it has more oil in it than water, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm like staring on Abby, you ready for another one? Make sure you guys still awake with me, right? <laughs> okay. Here's your question. Melting ice changes water from a solid to a liquid. Okay. Boiling water changes water from a liquid to a gas. These are examples of what type of change? Is it physical, chemical, elementary, or molecule? Physical? Both, good, that's right, okay. Ooh. All right, um, Benisha, you ready for another one? Okay, which bonds in the hair can be easily broken by heat or water? Is it salt bonds, disulfide bonds, hydrogen bonds, or van der Waals forces? Salt bonds? Okay. This one is actually hydrogen bonds. These are the ones that we can actually break up when we shampoo somebody's hair, it gets wet, right? With water or heat when they sit underneath the dryer. Because we can still go again, wet it down and reset that lady's hair and then do it again over and over. Because we haven't changed it, right? We just changed its appearance. Okay. Anthony, you have another one. Okay. All matter that is living or was once alive and contains carbon deals with physics, anatomy, Organic chemistry or inorganic chemistry? Is it organic? 
It's organic, yes. Anything that yeah, has carbon in it is organic. I always give that a silly analogy because I like aliens, right? When they send those spaceships out to look for, you know, life on other planets, they're looking for carbon because then they know something can actually live there, okay? So carbon is going to make sure that it's organic, all right? If it doesn't have carbon, then it's inorganic because that would be something like a rock or minerals, right? It never was alive. Okay. Um, the... Jocelyn, you ready for another one? <laughs> I'm going to get you right again. <laughs> Like, am I paying attention? <laughs> okay, this one has to do with something we talked about today. The color molecules that are in permanent hair color enter the hair with the aid of, and these are your choices, quats, an additional product, an acid substance, or an alkaline substance. Okay, it's permanent hair color. An alkaline substance. Yes, an alkaline <laughs> substance. Correct, because permanent color needs alk that it needs that ammonia in there, and that's an alkaline. Okay. What else we got here? Okay, Anna, you want another one? Did you leave me, Anna? No. She does. I okay. That's okay. Here's your question. The term used to identify anything that occupies space is called a gas, matter, a solid, or organic. Matter? Yep. Good. Good, good, good. Okay. So I've gone through these. Now I'm just going to go across the front row if you guys don't change places on me, okay? <laughs> um, Anthony, you're the first one on the top of my screen right now. <laughs> All right. Which of the following components are contained within temporary colors? Peroxide developers, certified colors, or oxidative colors? These are temporary colors. You have peroxide developers, certified colors, or oxidative colors. Certified colors. Certified colors is right. Good. Okay, Susanna, you ready for the next one? Yeah. Okay. Sub okay. Substances of acidic or alkaline nature that dissolve in water and or contain salt, water, carbon, or hydrogen. Is it hydrogen? Remember, it's in the question. It, no, it's water. Okay. Water. What I, this means is substance, because we actually are neutral, right? Okay. So what we use to dissolve anything is what we're asking you of acidic dissolve in water, they have to contain water. Okay, so the answer on that one's water. Does that make it easier? Okay. All right, Abby, this one's for you. What is the side bond that is the most important to you as a professional? Okay, salt bond, disulfide bond, hydrogen bond, or van der Waals forces? Disulfide bond. Disulfide bond, yes. Because that's one way you mess up during <laughs> chemical changes. Okay, Jocelyn, this one's for you. Do you have a question, Anna, huh? Anna? No, no. No? Okay. I just saw something strange on the screen. It's like a blue spinning dot on, on just your face. Okay. My All right, just, Jocelyn, here's your question. What was it? My camera's not working. Oh, okay. Maybe that's what it was. All right, here's your question, hun. Uh, can't use that one there. Uh, which of the following shampoos would not be used for color treated or damaged hair? Okay, and these are your choices plain shampoo, all purpose shampoo, non stripping shampoo, or an acid balanced shampoo.
So which one would not be used on color treated hair? This one was for me, right? Uh huh. Yes. Okay. Uh, plain shampoo. Actually, it's going to be the all-purpose. To be able to remember that one, the plain is mm, it's not so bad. It's just not an alkaline shampoo. But all-purpose, think of that. It's going to it's supposed to take care of everybody's hair, right? So how is it going to be able to be balanced enough for our hair? So I wouldn't use it on chemically treated hair, an all-purpose shampoo. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, who's on this? Venetia, you're on the next one on this, okay? In the process of making a cup of hot instant chocolate, what would the powdered chocolate represent? Is it the solute, the solvent, the diluted? Go ahead. Solute? Solute, yes, correct, good. <laughs> All right, Samantha, this one's for you. In what pH range is the hair and skin? 4.5 to 5.5. Good, good, okay. I didn't think I have to tell you what those <laughs> the options on that one. Adriana, this one's for you, hun. Okay. A solution that has more positive hydrogen ions than negative hydroxide ions would be considered acidic, neutral, alkaline, or slightly alkaline. Acidic? Yes. Good. <laughs> okay. Madison, are you ready? He's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. All right. Um, mixtures of organic substances and a medicinal agent, okay, are called solutions, ointments, emulsions, or suspensions. Would it be ointments? Yep, sure would be. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> getting down to the very mi <laughs> minimum here. Can you still hear me, Anna? Yes. Okay. So this is your question, okay? Okay. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen are the building blocks of, are they mixtures, elements, compounds, or amino acids? Compounds. Okay, these are gonna be your amino acids, okay? From this point, remember when I was talking about why you needed to know about chemistry and I said, when we start breaking down hair, it gets to a point where it reverts back to its original stands, right? So it builds itself up. So carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, aren't those elements already, right? And so when they add together and you start to break them down, they revert back to amino acids, okay? So though it happens to have that Cohen's in there, things that make up hair, right? Carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, sulfur, right? But this one didn't give you the sulfur in there. So these are your building blocks of amino acids that break, that build up to make hair. Does that make sense? A little bit? <laughs> I don't see the heads moving, it's just like, it's frozen. Can yes. you hear me, hon? Yes. Okay, okay, good. Okay, so that one's amino acids. Okay, who else? Madison. Yeah. Are you, there you go again. Okay. All right, here's your question, okay? Mm -hmm. Distilled water has a pH of seven and is considered to be a salt, a neutral, an acid, or an alkaline. Isn't it a neutral? Yes, it's neutral. Good. Okay, okay. Athena. Come participate with me. <laughs> mm. Eh. <laughs> mm. All right, here's your qu here's your question. <laughs> All right. Um where did I go? Okay. Oxidant, oxidants such as hydrogen peroxide have the ability to release sulfur, oxygen, nitrogen, or aluminum. Uh, I think it, it's either sulfur or oxygen. It's oxygen, yeah, there you oh, okay. go. Okay, um, it's oxygen. Yeah, think about it, it's oxidants. They're talking about yeah. oxygen being released. Okay, um, 
Let's see, where's my next one? Okay. Hit you, hit you. Okay. Heather, I'm not going to ask her question. Anthony, this is your turn again. What is formed when two or more non mixable are substances you asking me are united? No, I was just wondering if you're still there. <laughs> uh oh, I got a chat here. Hold on a second. I have a chat question here. Tatiana, you can't hear anything? I can't see it. I can't see you. I don't know where she went. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> She's not even in the class anymore. <laughs> All right. Going back to the top. Anthony? All right. Which of the following shampoo types is formulated to have the same pH as hair, skin, and nails? Is it soapless shampoos? Huh? Acid balance. Acid balance, correct. Good. Okay, Susanna, this one's for you. Okay. What is formed when two or more non mixable substances are united with the help of a binder? Is it a solution, a powder, an ointment, or an emulsion? An emulsion. Good. Then yeah, just keep repeating them until we get this memorized practically. <laughs> All right. Abby, this one's for you, okay? All right. Um, the instructions on the product state to shake well before use, which indicates this product is probably a solution, an ointment, an emulsion, or a suspension. Suspension. Good, good. Okay, Jocelyn, this one's for you. A mixture of two or more kinds of molecules evenly dispersed is known as an ointment, a suspension, a solution, or an emulsion? Solution. Good, good. Okay, Venetia, this one's for you. Okay. Uh, all of the following statements regarding the pH are true except, okay? These are your choices. You gotta find which one doesn't match, all right? The pH measurement scale ranges from zero to 14. A solution is acidic if it has more negative hydroxide ions. Solutions with equal hydrogen and hydroxide ions are neutral. And the pH is a unit of measure that indicates whether a substance is acidic, neutral, or alkaline. So which one of those is, is the not true? One? The second one? Which one? The yes, second the solution one? is acidic. Yep, you got it right. Thank you. Okay, um, Sam, this one's for you. Which of the following cosmetic classifications requires sifting until free of coarse gritty particles? Powder. Suspension? Oh, you got it, powder. <laughs> okay. Adriana, this one's gonna be for you. Okay. What is the pH of the client's natural hair that's been permed, colored, sculpted, and designed properly within the past few months? Is the pH 5. 5. 5. Oh, good girl. You guys are getting, you're getting this. <laughs> I'm so happy. Okay, Madison, this one's gonna be for you. Okay. okay. Um, I'm gonna throw this one in there, okay. The layer of hair consisting of a unique protein structure. I'm not going to give that hard. Here we go. Answer that. Go ahead. Is it 1.5, 10, 100, or 1,000? Wait, can you repeat it one more time? You totally cut out. I know. I watched the screen go up. It's crazy. A pH of 5 is how many more times acidic than a pH of six? Um, isn't is it, it 10? Yes. I'm gonna have to mix these up because you gotta get the same questions. <laughs> okay, Abby, which term identifies the change assigned to an oxidative hair color procedure? Carbon change, oxygen change, physical change, or chemical change? Is that oxygen change? 
it's actually this one's going to be a chemical change because remember when we use permanent color we change it permanently right so that's mm -hmm. a chemical change it's okay okay um athena this one's for you are you still there yeah i'm here okay all right hair is made up of primarily of macros telogen sperm or protein Sorry, oh, hold on. I don't know what happened to it. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Okay. Wait, can, can you just Let repeat the options for me really quick? Okay. The options are macros, telogen, sebum, or protein. What's hair primarily made of? Protein? Uh huh. What's up? That? That's it. <laughs> All right. What's that protein name? Do you know what? Keratin. Good. <laughs> Good. I like to throw in those extra ones. <laughs> All right. Um, Victoria, you ready for one? She's still with me now. Yeah, right. I'm ready. Okay, you're here. <laughs> Yeah, okay, I'm here. here's your question. All right. Which of the following classifications would identify emulsions that are generally used by the salon professional? Is it deodorants, loose particles, oil and water emulsions, or water and oil emulsions? Oh, I want to say water and oil emulsions. Okay, it's going to be our oil and water. Okay. Uh, okay. Remember, kind of remember we have to use that. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> close. <laughs> All right. Abby, you want another one? <laughs> like, okay. Sure, I'll take one. All right. Um, what bonds are found in the hair that can be easily broken with heat and water? Is it salt bonds, disulfide bonds, hydrogen bonds, or van der Waals forces? Is it disulfide bonds? Okay, no, these are the hydrogen ones because they're the ones that are broken by heat and water. And actually what they do is they give a physical change, right? Because I haven't done anything different to the hair. I've just like basically shampooed it where I got it wet, right? And then I dried it. All right. Um, what I got next? Athena. Yeah. Athena. Yeah. There you go. I'm always trying. All matter that is living or was once living contains carbon and deals with physics, anatomy, inorganic chemistry, or organic chemistry. Uh, wait, can you repeat the question first? Uh -huh. All matter on. that is okay. All matter that is living or was once living contains carbon and deals with okay physics or organic matter. Organic chemistry, yeah, <laughs> you got that part. Yeah. All right. Organic. Okay, Anna, you want to try another one? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, here's your question. Um, the color molecules in permanent hair color enter the hair with the aid of what? Quats, additional product, an alkaline substance, or an acid substance? An acid substance? Okay, it's gonna be the alkaline substance, okay? Because pretty much remember in hair color, we have to add that ammonia, right? And that ammonia is that alkaline part of it, okay? Just to help you remember that. All right, so it's always an alkaline that actually gives that permanent hair color its, its working action, okay? Because there's a couple questions later on in, in the final, I guess, you know, you can take your final from here that talks about the alkaline products or ingredients. Okay, this one goes to Anthony. Okay. Um, melting ice changes water from a solid to a liquid. Boiling water changes water from a liquid to a gas. These are examples of what type of change? Okay. Uh, what? 
A physical, uh, physical. Good. good, good. Okay. Susanna, this one's for you. Okay. The term used, hold on just one second. Okay. <laughs> I know. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the question. The term used to identify anything that occupies space is called gas, matter, solid, or organic. Matter. Yes. Okay. And Jocelyn, we're coming back to you again. Got a couple more minutes here. All right. Um, what is the side bond that is of the greatest concern of the salon professional? Is it the salt bond, the disulfide bond, the hydrogen bond, or the van der Waals forces? Disulfide bond? Yes, good, good. Okay, um, Jocelyn, we're gonna do you again. <laughs> A substance that's able to dissolve another substance is called a powder, a solvent, an ointment, or an emulsion. Can you repeat the options again? Okay, you have a solvent, an ointment, a powder, or an emulsion. A solvent? Yes, good. You got it. Okay, I'm actually going to stop here because I've got a break. I've got another class coming in in 10 minutes. So I want to get a little break right there. <laughs> All right. Are there any questions about your test for tomorrow when you come back in? Is there anything you don't understand that we've covered? No? Okay. Something like which one of the following? I'm, I'm trying to read somebody's message here. May I get the third question and its answer, please? It was something like, which one? Who's it? Is that, Venetia, you're asking me a question, hon? Yeah, I missed the third one because my internet wasn't good. So it was something like, which are the following component about uh, temporary colors? It was a question oh. like that. Okay, it says, which of the following components are contained within temporary colors? Yeah. Okay, and the answer, the answer is going to be certified colors. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay. Yeah. Okay, if you check your notes, you'll be able to see that's what I gave you. Yeah, yesterday or day before yesterday or something like that. All right. Yeah. You guys better do really well tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? No? Okay. I will see you tomorrow and good luck on your test. Okay. Okay. Bye bye, you guys. Bye. 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 Bye, bye Janie. Bye bye, hon. <laughs> <laughs>